Hi, my name is Jen Underwood. I'm a program manager in Data Fanatic on the Power BI team. Today I'm going to walk through the Power BI showcase example of Tampa Palms Real Estate. It is a real example of how I personally have used data in my own life to buy and sell a home. In this particular example, I got the data set from Zillow.com. The realtors we were talking to about selling our home were giving us advice to price it at a much lower price per square foot than we were expecting, while at the same time telling us to make an offer for the other home at top dollar. Since both my husband and I are number crunchers, we wanted to review the data. And we're really happy we did that because we were able to price our home competitively $10,000 higher than the realtor was expecting and we still sold within one week. So we put in our zip code, we entered in how many uh, bedrooms we wanted, the home type and, and other criteria in here, and went ahead and entered the data into Excel, the world's most popular BI tool. And this is the real spreadsheet. Here is the house we were looking at at the time. We did not end up getting this particular house. We bought one nearby. However, the comps sheet here has the data that we entered. And there's one thing I want to point out here. So we entered the things that you would expect, single family home, the square footage, how many bedrooms and bathrooms, the list price, then the sale price, because a lot of times what you list for may not be what it actually sells for. And the price per square foot, which is usually how those realtors and the real estate appraisers will base a price off of. And one of the tips for Power BI was I went ahead and grabbed the images because you can really tell by the image you know, what, what type of home, if it's really comparable or not, especially if you're dealing with foreclosures. Um, I went ahead and put those images on a website so that I could browse them in the canvas in Power BI Desktop. From there, I went to Power BI Desktop. I really went ahead and got the data from my Excel workbook clicked open and just brought the data on in and clicked load. I'm not going to do that again because uh, I've already got the data in here. A model will automatically be created for me and the data types will be automatically detected, which is quite nice. I want to double check and you'll want to do this as well if you're using images just to make sure that your image file has a data category of image URL. That allows you to explore and see those images on the Power BI desktop canvas. So going back to the canvas, now my husband and I imagine us on the phone with a realtor in another location, all interactively looking at this data together and exploring it. Essentially, I plotted address and the sold price per square foot metric to size the bubbles. And I could start to see you know, a little bit of patterns there. Uh, but what it really popped out to me was when I took the sold price per square foot, that's when the pricing patterns really became apparent. And the homes that we were looking at, even though they were close to each other, this one had a price per square foot of 106, while these had 149. That's a pretty big difference for how close those homes are together. To supplement the exploration and kind of take a look at these different homes, went ahead and put on a table with a photo, the address itself, and the sold price. Yeah, did I get sold price? There you go. So now as I'm interactively exploring these two, I can control click and now I can take a look at those two in that particular price category and see if there's any patterns that you know, visually in the way these, these homes look at all. Uh, another way that I could do this is if I just wanted to you know, highlight these by the different categories, I can do that by clicking on the legends, which is, which is pretty nice on the top there. And um, there's different ways that you can explore the data visually. The last area that I added was the pricing over time to see if there were any seasonality patterns. In our case, we were looking at a sale in summer. And what we could see here is there was really only one dip. It probably was a foreclosure at $59 per square foot there. But all in all, the reference line that I have, and you can create a reference line, 
and enter in a value here and I entered in 125 that was the price per square foot we were considering making an offer at. I hope you've enjoyed this little example of how I've personally used data. I look forward to seeing what you come up with in your examples. Have a great day.